So we told you all of the things that could be causing your gut problems, that you could be gaining weight, that you could be having all kinds of irregularities, and that the food you're eating might be causing the gut problems. But now we want to tell you how you can reinforce your gut microbiome, how you can make it really healthy and happy and holy. I like that. We noticed that 85.8% of you guys are not subscribed. So what are you doing? We give you guys free weight loss advice. And to the 14.2% that are subscribed, you guys are doing something right here. So thank you for all your support. We really appreciate it. But seriously, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and click the subscribe button down below. So these are the six science-based ways. Number one, increase fiber. I know everybody tells you to eat fiber, but- But what kind of fiber? All different kinds of fiber. As many kinds as you can fit in. Whole, not in a package or a can. Right, what is fiber? So there's soluble fiber and insoluble fiber, and we teach you all this stuff in our program. By the way, you get this mini gut microbiome course. And um, so basically, if you eat a pear, there's fiber in it. If you eat a squash, there's fiber in it. If you eat avocado. whole grains, there's fiber. Avocados have a surprising amount of fiber. I had no idea how much fiber there are in avocados. Yeah, so that means get full on vegetables and fruits. So for breakfast, if you're using, usually having like toast with jam or eggs and bacon, you might want to add in some spinach or some squash or some roasted mushrooms or something a little bit different. So increase your fiber intake. Studies show that up to 30 varieties a week, that means fiber from a pear is different than fiber from an apple, is gonna help you to rebuild your gut microbiome. You don't need fancy probiotics that are expensive. But number two is consuming fermented foods like yeah. sauerkraut. This is a tradition that cultures throughout time have used. And I always got fascinated by what are the commonalities in nutritional healing in every culture. So you find it in Russia, you find it all throughout Asia, all throughout Asia. And it's been a tradition for thousands of years, also all throughout Europe. Northern Europe, Southern Europe, Eastern and Western. So irrespective of race, religion, creed, everybody has fermented vegetables. Now they used to do it for uh, preserving food, you know, because in the winter you needed to have vegetables, but there was nothing growing. So before we had the supply chain that we have now, uh, you needed to ferment your, your vegetables in order just to have vegetables. But consuming fermented foods, we consume, if you're gonna buy fermented foods, that's like sauerkraut. There's all kinds of fancy sauerkrauts you can get. They're like $8 a bag. You can make it yourself a lot more inexpensively. And uh, we usually eat about a big spoonful like before meals. Yeah, it's a really simple hack that can make a huge difference in your gut microbiome health. So number three is reducing stress. Now I had no idea how important this was. I did. For weight loss in general. <laughs> okay, guys, wait, wait, no. Again, no, no, again. no, no, hold on. No, that's so funny because as a mother and daughter thing, like I'll learn so much about health from other people. And then I'm like, mom, I had no idea you were right all along. And she's like, and I genuinely feel bad because I know like as a mom one day, I'm going to feel this, this, this like excruciating pain of like, I tried to tell you. No, no, it's normal, Penelope. It's but, so like, normal. I'm just going to feel so bad. <laughs> but like, you're right. You, you always tell me reduce stress, but it's hard to tell someone who's like, really, really stressed, just reduce stress, because you're like, what do I do? Yeah, no one teaches you, like schools don't teach you, parents don't teach you, like how you're supposed to really And know. society is really bad at teaching you too. Like right. videos online, like on, when you're scrolling and they're like, do this to be less stressed, you're like, I'm stressed because I'm scrolling. Yeah. This video I'm watching scrolling, you know what I mean? So just, I'm putting it out there for you because I've recently learned how to be better at de-stressing. Meditation is so amazing. It is, yeah. Deep breathing is also a very effective way to retrain your nervous system on how to function with more ease, grace, and hope. Um, stress is rampant right now in our society. We've done a lot of videos about stress lately because it's an important topic. And looking at our nervous system is, is actually a program, which I haven't even told you, that I'd like to produce next year about how you care for your nervous system. And it is not just about meditating or deep breathing. It's also about the kinds of fats you're eating. It's about the kind of diet you're, you're you know, you're eating about about how you're living, when you're sleeping. It's like a whole lifestyle in order to rehabilitate your nervous system, which is re the reason why you get stressed. Number four is prebiotic rich foods. Now, mom, can you tell me why? Prebiotic rich foods, there's prebiotics and probiotics. And so there's soluble fiber and insoluble fiber. And um, certain foods have insoluble fiber. Some foods have both, but you want to get enough of both kinds because the insoluble fiber 
will uh, be, act like a prebiotic in the gut. So it's actually, I think, in the small intestines, if I'm not mistaken. And that's gonna help to increase beneficial bacterial growth. You get those in garlic and onions and leeks and um, Jerusalem artichokes, also known as sunchokes. Uh, and there's a number of foods that will, will help give you that, that variety because you wanna have diversity in your gut microbiome. Believe it or not, exercising regularly also helps you to reinforce a healthy gut microbiome, which is kind of hard to believe. Like, how is exercising helping my gut? And it's a rather complicated process. Can you simplify it for us? Overall, it helps with the gut function. And I think it has to do with circulation. And if there's somebody out there that knows more than I do, I would love it if you'd comment below because I'm always interested in learning. But my logic tells me that when you breathe more deeply because your heart is pumping faster, you are depressing your uh, diaphragm. Mm -hmm. And then when you breathe more deeply, your diaphragm is pressing on the top part of your large intestine, which helps it to move. Mm. So lots, a lot of time people will say, oh, I just exercised and now I have to take, I have a bowel movement, like I have to go to the bathroom. And so I think the respiration, like breathing, helps the circulation. I bet it's way more complex than that. I bet you there's a whole host of chemical processes that happen when you exercise, including endorphins and hormones and all kinds of things. But that's just my logical connection between exercise and why it's helpful for the gut microbiome. I love number six, avoiding antibiotics. I feel like people don't really talk about this or know about this very much, but I know you have caused a lot of harm in your past from eating a lot of antibiotics or taking a lot of antibiotics? Well, unfortunately, when I was a child, I had chronic ear infections and my mother thought that it was a good idea because the doctor told her to give me antibiotics. You never really gave me antibiotics. No, I gave you antibiotics, I think, once or twice because- That's it, and I'm so glad you did. Yeah. Because you built my gut microbiome up. Well, I tried, yeah. I mean, antibiotics, unfortunately, are being given out too frequently. And uh, I understand that there are liability issues and doctors' hands are tied in a lot of ways, but if you don't absolutely need the antibiotics, you shouldn't take them. Now, antibiotics are saving people's lives. In like a die situation, just like the ER. Like I remember lots of doctors on the holistic end have been talking about this, how like, it's good that we have people who can do emergency like surgeries, yes. but that's like really, only thing that medicine should be used for. Well, like for example, when I had osteomyelitis, I needed antibiotics so I didn't get my leg amputated. When people have serious infections uh, where they have to get amputations or they might die, they need antibiotics. And antibiotics are absolutely what the Western world has done, Western medicine, like really, like special saving lives. But overuse of antibiotics acts like a um, a nuclear bomb, so to say, for your gut microbiome, and you will rebuild it. So it's not like game over. It just takes time. And if you don't need it, you know, it, pharmaceuticals in general affect adversely affect the gut microbiome by, by killing off bacteria and making it harder for good bacteria to grow. So, I mean, in this video, we're just kind of scratching the surface, but we wanted to give you something you could take in your hand and use. So your day-to-day -day life could be, when you're making choices about what you wanna eat, it can be a way for you to reinforce your gut microbiome, which helps increase your immune system. It helps increase your good mood. It reduces your anxiety. It helps you to lose weight. I mean, there's only an upside to working on your gut microbiome. And if you know how, then you can start making choices that are really empowered and delicious and fun and nutritious and finding all kinds of creative ways to incorporate these foods. Like when we make our bowls, Oh my gosh, we're like full of fiber and color and fermented foods, you know, and then we're trying to breathe before we eat or pray or sing. Mom's been timing how long we eat things for, which I'm really not looking forward to today because I'm really hungry, <laughs> but I'm gonna do it. Yeah, so if you can exercise regularly, avoid antibiotics, increase your fiber intake, then you're gonna really set yourself up for success. So that's our hope for you. And if you're like, hey, I really need support. I really need guidance on this journey. I don't know where to start or what to do. What the heck am I doing? And you need to lose weight or you need to get in better health or better shape, whatever it is. Mom and I have an amazing women's accountability group. It's only for women. It's super exclusive. It's super private. It's super heartfelt. And everyone is sharing such like special moments and parts of their health journey. And both the good and the bad, by the way. We want to invite you to that group, but only if you're an awesome person. We don't accept weird people. So you have to be an awesome girly. <laughs> and if you're an awesome girly who needs some support, I would love it if you would join. So comment the word natural down below for more information, or you can email us, or you can just click the link in description to join our program.
Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you all the time. We help women to beat obesity with our Step It Up system in just 90 days. Click the link in the description to learn how to lose weight without drugs like Ozempic.